After one of the most important and medium-changing generations in console history, the 8th system cycle is drawing to a close. That means the parameters for judging the best games of the generation are set. Titles released between the close of 2013 when the PS4 and Xbox One became available and the close of November 2020 when the next generation started taking hold. Obviously, there are a ton of games to choose from, but as gaming thunders on into increasingly uncharted waters, let's take stock of the finest titles from the last seven years. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 20 best video games of the generation. First up, a ton of honorable mentions. Super Mario Odyssey, Gears 5, PT slash Silent Hills, Cuphead, Resident Evil 7, Shovel Knight, Pokemon Go, Stardew Valley, Until Dawn, Alien Isolation, Tetris Effect Connected, Celeste, Return of the Obra Dinn, Half-Life Alex, The Outer Wilds, Hitman 2, Into the Breach, Inside, Resident Evil 2, Marvel Spider-Man, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Devil May Cry 5, Monster Hunter World, and Bloodborne. And with all those out the way, number 20 is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Going from those guys that made Dark Souls to one of the most dependable and beloved devs in the industry, From Software closed out the 8th generation with the brutally precise Sekiro. Taking all the lessons learned from the Souls quadrilogy alongside Bloodborne, Sekiro is that signature sense of intense dread focused into the studio's most ruthless combat system yet. Learn and overcome, or just get flattened. There is no middle ground. Number 19, Mortal Kombat 11. Just when you thought Netherrealm were getting a little stale with Mortal Kombat 10, they fired back out the gates with the freshest feeling Mortal Kombat yet. An incredible story, overhauled offense and defensive mechanics, tighter frame-specific fighting, and the best fatalities to date. Mortal Kombat 11 has also now become a phenom of post-launch content. Sporting appearances from everyone including Sylvester Stallone as Rambo, to Christopher Lambert returning as Raiden, to even Keith David as Spawn. Mortal Kombat is better than ever, showing no signs of slowing down. Number 18, Rocket League. An idea so simple the world's developers likely slapped their heads and thought, why didn't we think of that? Rocket League's improvement on what supersonic acrobatic rocket-powered battle cars started is one for the ages. With a perfected physics engine that means launching a screaming volley and actually scoring feels like nothing else, Rocket League is supremely simple to pick up and play, but devilishly hard to master. Going free to play in 2020 ensured millions more players dove in to see what the fuss was about, leading to snappier matchmaking and a more lively community than ever. Number 17, The Witness. Brain-breaking puzzles from Jonathan Blow, to the point where the very idea of cognition and language is at the heart of understanding this island of mysteries the developers have put together. Truly, The Witness is next-level stuff, the kind of game that you just need to immerse yourself in, and it comes with a level of genius behind its creation that I can barely comprehend. Number 16, Forza Horizon 4. The finest racer of the generation with a pristinely addictive treadmill of car unlocks, stunt ramps to hit, and car optimization to get lost in. Whether, like me, you still miss the burnout-filled days of the 2000s, or you want to add better gear changes to shave milliseconds off your lap time, Forza Horizon 4 is for you. Oh, and there's a Halo-themed unlockable where you race a pelican through northern England, smashing through various houses and debris in a warthog. It's all kinda brilliant. Number 15, Undertale. Coded by one-man wizard Toby Fox, Undertale is a phenomenally reactive and introspective RPG. Its music and characters are infectiously memorable, but it's the game remembering every choice you make, every moral twist and turn you can indulge in, that elevates the experience tenfold. Yes, the graphics are primitive as hell, but the intelligence that went into this game's very design is something else. Number 14, No Man's Sky. Nothing short of the most expansive and experimental sci-fi game in quite some time, we all remember the state that this thing launched in, but far fewer people have checked back in on No Man's Sky since. Because Hello Games have bowed their time well. Every last feature Sean Murray once lied about is now in the game, alongside many above and beyond additions like Walking Max, Summonable Freighters, and 32-player multiplayer. All of this combined means you can dogfight, build a city, or just go on an exploratory group mission to your heart's content. Number 13, Death Stranding. As I'll get to with another of Hideo Kojima's games higher on this list, there's something about the way he designs feedback loops, gameplay rewards, and narrative incentives that made Death Stranding impossible to put down. Quirky, downright weird, and filled with poop grenades, sure, but an endless delight brimming with fresh ideas and AAA production quality in equal measure, that was assured from day one. Number 12, Control. 
After two Max Payne games, Alan Wake and Quantum Break, Control saw Remedy steer headlong into the elements that made people fall in love with their signature style in the first place. Max himself, James McCaffrey, returns as the shadowy head of the Federal Bureau of Control, and it's up to you as Jesse Faden to track down what's really going on. Alongside all the mysteries, you'll use telekinesis to lob literally any part of the environment straight into your opponent's faces. Needless to say, this is a powerfully unique game, and despite it not selling that well back at launch, I would heartily recommend it from front to back. Number 11, Horizon Zero Dawn. With one of the coolest premises in gaming history, the notion of robot dinosaurs populating the land and humanity not really having any idea of what the hell happened beforehand, the resulting story doesn't let up for a second once things start slipping into place. With brilliantly experimental combat and instant PlayStation mascot in Aloy, and tons of plot threads to expand upon in sequels, Horizon is one of gaming's most exciting new franchises, and I can't wait to see what Guerrilla do next. Into the top 10, as number 10 is Red Dead Redemption 2. Rockstar's longtime lead writer Dan Hauser left the company following Red Dead Redemption 2, leaving behind a weighty, lumbering extrapolation on the death of lawlessness in the Old West. Arthur Morgan's tale is one of risk-taking and regret, one to nihilism alongside the love of a family bond. It's Hauser's finest work as a project lead and a gargantuan game we're still finding new things to love in years after launch. Number 9, Doom Eternal. Liquid butter carnage, Doom Eternal saw id Software prove their status as veteran game devs all over again. Yes, Doom 2016 was a strong return to form, but Eternal cranked that dial until it fell off. Power-ups in abundance, a revamped lore that makes the Doom Slayer into the most powerful being in all eternity, just nothing less than ripping, tearing, and obliterating faster than ever until it is done. Number 8, Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain. If we were rewarding titles based purely off gameplay and nothing else, The Phantom Pain would walk it. Hideo Kojima's final Metal Gear is as balmy as always, but by going open world, he frees up your infiltration options per area. Twinned with Kojima's own kitchen sink mentality, the sheer amount of possibilities you have, whilst also building your army one scanned soldier at a time, makes MGS5 stupidly hilarious, addictive, and satisfying in equal measure. Even that hampered ending can't fault how supremely well designed everything about playing this really is. Number 7, Ghost of Tsushima. There's a quality to Ghost of Tsushima's overall feel that's hard to put into words. It comes the first time you take a moment to simply play the flute in between missions, watch the sun set while writing a haiku over a beautifully still lake full of tiger lilies. It's an entire open world experience without checkbox mission lists or intrusive waypoint markers. Instead, you just let the wind itself guide you from one blood-soaked battle to the next. There's a beauty and a viciousness to everything Jin Sakai does in the name of protecting Tsushima itself. And as the credits are rolling, regardless of which ending you pick, the journey is what really stands out. Number 6, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Going into the generation, you'd expect the gems in Xbox's crown to have a Gears of War logo on, or maybe a tiny Master Chief helmet by the time we were done. However, no, hands down the best Xbox exclusive of the generation by a considerable distance, and an immaculate video game all its own, is Ori and the Will of the Wisps. With a beautiful soaring score and a chunky melee combat system propelling you towards a very satisfying 100% completion, this Blind Forest sequel doesn't have a single pixel out of place. Number 5, Titanfall 2. Few shooters are quite so immaculate as Titanfall 2. The sense of locomotion, in-the-field experimentation that you always have access to, and the titular summoning of Titan mechs being a powerful modifier to any fight. Titanfall 2's campaign was conceptualized as a series of awesome set pieces, with the story then being written to tie them together. Honestly, you can tell in the best way possible. Every last drop of the immense talent over at Respawn Studios went into this, and it remains one of the stupidest marketing moves ever to release Titanfall 2 in between Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and Battlefield 1. Seriously, if you're yet to check this out, Titanfall 2 is utterly stellar. Number 4, The Last of Us Part 2. None of us were ready for the way this game starts out, and the resultant explosive controversy mired The Last of Us 2 in divisive territory for the majority of 2020. Still, what Naughty Dog have achieved is a clarion call for peace and harmony, wrapped in a forlorn revenge tale. This is a sequel that holds nothing back, features some of the best acting in anything ever, and ends on a note that will stick with us for the rest of time. If you're still wondering about the way this entire story goes, I have already put a video on the channel that I recommend you check out. Number 3, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. 
the game that put CD Projekt Red's name up in lights. The Witcher 3 was a lot of people's first venture across the continent, and it's one that made a lifetime's worth of memories. The balletic sleek combat, morally twisted mission design that throws you in at the deep end at a moment's notice. Geralt himself is the perfect RPG protagonist, twinning the daily duties of a supernatural bounty hunter with the gripping and emotional turmoil of searching for his surrogate daughter. The Witcher 3 is easily the RPG of the generation, and who knows what the hell CDPR have in store once we fire into Cyberpunk 2077. Number 2. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Few games take us back to the heart of why we love gaming quite like Breath of the Wild. Ditching numerics, loot grinds, pointless side missions, and other tick box distractions, Nintendo's reinvention of Zelda was a streamlined, beautiful, gorgeously addictive, yet serene love letter to the very idea of being lost in a world of adventure. And number 1. God of War Few games get every last element of their initial project goal this right. Not just a level of technical and mechanical proficiency that meant playing God of War was a blast from front to back, but thematically 2018's effort elevates gaming as a medium, providing powerful commentary on everything that went before. It's a veteran team of unbelievably talented individuals, from Chris Judge and Sonny Soljek's performances to Corey Barlog's immaculate direction, making God of War recommendable to literally everyone, newcomers and longtime players alike. Pound for pound, you can't beat the majesty of game design on display here. And when such a massive artistic risk pays off in abundance, you can't help but be in awe of whatever comes next. And that's been my list of the best video games of the generation, seven previous years rolled into 20 specific titles and a ton of honourable mentions. Please let me know your own favourite games of the gen down in the comments below. And please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.